Hi, I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward to what, what might happen in coming weeks, and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout the show. Well, the stock market had a near replay of the previous week as investors celebrated more good news on a COVID-19 vaccine, only to spend the rest of the week chopping lower. And just as happened in the previous week, a Sunday night uptick in the futures became a pre-opening surge on Monday as Moderna came out and said their vaccine was 94.5% effective. Certainly a reason to celebrate. Tuesday and Wednesday, we saw wide chop as uh, the COVID-19 uh, is not really paying any attention to a vaccine coming, and it is surging around the world. The uh, U.S. saw a peak of 185,000 new cases, and the Midwest uh, is the worst as uh, cases are, are well beyond last summer's peak. And now we're uh, dealing with threats of shutdowns and the realities of some of those in different states. And the question uh, is really on the vaccine is uh, how fast will delivery come and also acceptance? Will people uh, be willing to take it? Well, uh, the markets uh, suffered from that fear of that surge and a lot of uh, areas now closing schools and closing bars and restaurants. New York City closed their schools and that brought sellers back into the stock market. Uh, the biggest drop was late Wednesday afternoon as Goldman Sachs came out separately and said that they expect that there's going to be very, very large pension fund selling towards the end of the month or at the end of the month. So uh, that really is uh, weighing on the market also. <clears throat> Thursday, we saw a lot of gyrations in the market. It was uh, weak and then reversed to the upside uh, on news that uh, McConnell was agreeing that he wants to talk to Schumer about stimulus. Uh, the weakness came early as there, were, uh, uh, there was an uptick in disappointed investors and in new claims for, un for unemployment. And then near the close, the market on Thursday headed sharply lower again uh, as uh, Mnuchin came out and he said that he's going to let those rescue programs expire uh, on December 1st. And the unused amount of money uh, would be reallocated to general use. Even talking about paying down debt, I almost fell over when I heard that. Come on. Well, we know that's not going to happen. They're going to find other ways uh, to spend uh, that money, and that debt that we have is not going to get paid down for ever. Friday, uh, we saw uh, overnight selling, uh, but that re reversed uh, as, as the market really is just really sloppy here. Uh, and then uh, headed down again as uh, Mnuchin and the Fed heads are going nose to nose right now uh, over these rescue programs. And there's a lot of Fed uh, comments going out there uh, on what to do with those unspent dollars and should they be pulling back those programs yet. Well, that is very, very contrary to this uh, discussion of McConnell talking to Schumer and uh, all of that is just a bunch of hooey. We have no idea uh, what's going to go on with that. And the real news is that uh, there is a vaccine, really looks like it coming. I didn't think that was going to happen, but here it comes and it's really exciting. And the other side of that is we are in the worst of the COVID right now. The stock market last week, um, as we discussed, what we thought would be range bound uh, over the next few months. The rotation has been very significant, and it's it's been a big factor as money comes out of the tech stocks and those that benefited from this uh, environment of the virus uh, and all of the stimulus, and then the movie moving the money moving into the beaten up stock groups 
uh, with a lot of those moving up, industrials, uh, energies, uh, just uh, 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 airlines and, and cruise ships and all of those companies that are, are not going to see another dime coming into their coffers for a long, long period of time. But investors, they can look a long way out, and they're looking for value right now, and that's what we have going on, this huge swapping and uh, in this great rotation that we have. Um, we we still think that, and the investors still think that, invest that no matter what's going on with the Fed and all this conversation about these programs, the Fed is still going to be very accommodative for a long period of time, and that is giving the uh, investors hope. And uh, while, while the U.S. market uh, is likely to be in this range, we think it's going to underperform the rest of the world equity markets. I'm going to show you why in this show. Uh, and for that, for that period that we think we're going to see better uh, foreign equity markets, that's likely to hold up the U.S. market. So we are slightly edging up the range that we think that U.S. stocks will be in uh, for the next few months. I'll show you that uh, in, in a few minutes uh, as I review the European stock markets. Still, um, U.S. values right now we're looking at are historic. Um, the values compared to GDP, uh, and we think that you know the next few months in this range that we're looking at is actually going to be part of a very very big top with what we said would be we believe a bear market into 2021 2022. We're just making our targets a little bit higher right now. And you'll see why, as I think you're going to love this cycle analysis that I'm going to bring you coming up as we look at Europe in a very, very different way. And then I'll compare it to the uh, S&P 500. And we're also going to take a hard look at the gold market also coming up, which has been uh, moving in a way that is worrisome. It's holding above some key levels. Uh, but still looking very sloppy. For the week, the stock market very narrowly mixed. Small changes, except for the Russell, uh, which is up about 2%. The rest of the index is just on either side of even for the week. Bond market, 30-year gains about a point and a half. We were looking for a gain in the bond market. That knocks the 10-year yields down about five basis points. Gold market loses $17. And really, as we said, there's a threat of a breakdown in there. Silver market loses about 40 cents. Uh, still, uh, overall, the silver market acting better and looking better than the gold market is. And uh, that's uh, as it relates to other industrial metals, with copper being just absolutely a rock. Dollar loses four-tenths of a percent, but we think that is going to be making an upturn soon in coming weeks, which also could be a threat to the gold market. Oil up a dollar seventy. This is the second week in a row of gains. That pattern is looking much better, and so are the oil stocks, uh, which uh, we have talked about. Uh, as these different groups now are getting a lot of money coming into them, uh, and the tech stocks are just turning very, very sloppy. So that's oil stocks are one of the categories that that money is moving into. So, all right, some important announcements before we move into this really great analysis uh, that we have coming up. Don't go away and don't roll forward. You want to see this. Make sure uh, if you're new to Ask Slim, uh, go and explore the website, uh, subscribe, uh, and uh, you can become a free member there. We still have a little special going on. I'll tell you about that. Uh, if you're on YouTube and watching our clips here, uh, subscribe to that channel. Click that notification bell, and that's going to let you know uh, when we put up a video, which is just about once a day now. RV's doing some great analysis that we're posting also up there. And make sure you give a thumbs up. Like this video. You don't like it. Make sure you tell us why. Uh, we uh, assume people will disagree with us, but we want to always give the best information we can. And uh, you being uh, uh, honest with us and telling us that you love it helps us or there's some reason that you disagree and uh, let us know that too. Twitter, you can go follow me at AskSlim.com. For information uh, on our memberships and our questions about our huge offerings of education and analysis, well, write to Matt, Matt at AskSlim.com. He's great, and he'll give you all the information uh, that you need. Remember, 
we are still uh, just for the next few days uh, in our premium services preview uh, and uh, up through Tuesday you're going to be able to get our SIR snapshot our live stream uh, on SIR which is just amazing for interday traders you will not believe how good that is and you'll get that Monday and Tuesday if you uh, sign up for a free membership now our daily trade ideas that's a level three uh, membership that we're going to be uh, including in these next couple days slimulator ranking system well I can't even explain it and the momentum tracker these are amazing apps that we have built that really help you with understanding the momentum conditions and conditions of the key stocks that you want to look at and futures and ETFs so go to askslim.com and become a free member for that announcing now our annual Ask Slim holiday special. Give the gift of Ask Slim. It starts on November 25th. We have special rates for our three month memberships. And for the, because these are gifts, these are not recurring. If you wanna give this to somebody, they're gonna have it for three months and then you don't have to worry about any renewals at all. That'd be up to, uh, to the person who has the gift if they wanna do that, of course. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that. So this is a non-recurring membership, three months at a special rate. You can give that gift to someone you know who loves trading or investing, or you can give that gift to yourself. Uh, it's really great for first-time members at Ask Slim. Uh, use this uh, special. You can do that to try our higher level memberships for three months. Also, it's still not recurring, so you'll get a peek what we're doing for three months. Uh, and uh, we'll help you pay for it, actually, because uh, when you do this, then we're going to send you an ask, uh, an, uh, a special Ask Slim Amazon gift card. Right. We're going to issue that to you uh, to pay for part of these memberships, uh, a little give back that we want to do for you for giving a membership so give it to somebody you know and love who you want to uh, help learn trading investing or give yourself a great gift for more info well become a free member uh, at Ask Slim we'll be putting out a lot of things on that when it comes out uh, watch for announcements on Twitter might be some other on social media or write to Matt at AskSlim.com for details on this and he will give you all of that so just uh, absolutely great information uh, that we have coming uh, fantastic all right so moving over to our special analysis that we're doing right now on the European stock markets so uh, I always you know talk about how I look at market correlations and how important that is uh, I say it in future speak all the time as I look at 24 different futures contracts and talk about how those markets work together uh, I think that it's really so important and it's hard to be an effective analyst when you're looking only at one chart you know we look at multiple time frames and then we look at what correlates with everything uh, that that uh, is is connected to that particular chart that we're analyzing so while I was evaluating the US indexes uh, the uh, uh, end uh, end of this week and uh, looking to create this show uh, I referred to the world markets. I wanted to look at those and I wanted to get a good idea as to what they look like. Because I knew that the world markets were well underperforming the U.S. market over a long period of time. And I figured, well, if we're in a time when there's a lot of rotation going on, maybe they're strengthening. So I wanted to take a good look at that. So I looked at those and you're going to be just astounded at what you look at here. Uh, the European markets are looking great. And this, this coincides with our analysis that, well, the equity market here in the U.S. is likely to hold up into January. Well, I'll show you. We're looking for a minor dip in December, uh, but then rallying again into sometime in January, maybe even into early February. Uh, uh, but then we think, of course, risk is going to grow after that. But what I want to show you now is looking at the stocks 50, the FEZ, and I'm going to show you the uh, three of the European markets and give you an idea of what cycle analysis looks like in these. And that's going to be, I think, really valuable to this uh, analysis. And then I'm going to show you a, a unique chart looking at the relative strength of the U.S of the US market to uh, the European markets. The the FEZ is the stocks 50, and we're gonna start out right there as we look at FEZ. This is a, a chart of the biggest 50 European stocks 
uh, in this index. And this has cycle analysis on there. So I'll do a little primer for you so you, uh, in case there are new people out there, you get an idea of what we're looking at. On the bottom here are cycle brackets. This is just the drawing tool in here that helps us understand the rhythms in the market. Cycle analysis is a look at money flow. It's visual uh, and it's an art form. It's not exact, uh, but n n energies aren't exactly exact. And what happens is, is that there are influences on the energies and that has uh, an influence on these wave on the wave action that you see in here. Uh, and this uh, is, is a very clear look. So this is the uh, what we call the ideal and where these vertical lines are actually where these cycle lows occurred as you can see that and look how close they were to what you're looking at here as what was the anticipated periods for rallies this is the rising phase right in here or declines the declining phase right in here <clears throat> what i put in on these yellow ovals were just where these declining phases how they 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 came out and you can see that <clears throat> And then uh, when you get into this, you know, rising phase, you get these kind of long upward waves that you can see of upward movement. Uh, you're also looking at a 34 week moving average that when it turns, it helps you with understanding the cycle condition uh, and the momentum condition. And you can see right over here that turned up right at this point and then turn down and you can see it's turning up right now. So let's get a little closer look in here and get an idea. So what we're looking back into now is to back to 2016. And you can see these beautiful rhythms. And note the diamond top right in here. A diamond top is a megaphone and then an opposite triangle that you can see right in there. And that made the diamond top. And then this cycle was negative. Then you had a positive cycle and one that broke down. <clears throat> now you have a positive cycle again, and we put some projections in here. So what you're looking at here is this cycle low right at this point, and then the cycle low right at this point. What is the length of these cycles? Well, cycles are measured from low to low, and that gives you the length. And this is a period of 32 weeks. Now in here are some smaller cycles. You can see this little half cycle right in here. There's also a little half cycle right in here. And generally when that half cycle and the dominant cycles, we call it, are moving up together, you get your biggest upside moves. And here we are right over here, only three weeks into this advance. We have already moved out above this key level right here. So when you break out above a last cycle peak, you are confirming a very bullish condition. And we did that only three weeks into this advance. That leaves a long time to rise. I'll show you a little bit more about that in some of these other charts. But this you could see uh, under hitting the 61.8% FIBS extension, we would expect this to take you out to about mid-January. If it was an even more bullish condition, that green projection we have takes you up to the FIB extension target zone, which actually gets you out into February sometime. And based on what these, what the lengths of the rallies are on average, that does make some sense. So you can see in here, looking at the European markets and looking back uh, uh, for quite a ways, these rhythms just keep coming and coming as you go back all the way here to 2015 and uh, this is just spectacular and you get a very very good sense for the market uh, condition as you look at this with momentum turning up right over here early in this rise and a lot more to go so you would expect that this cycle would then appear on the european markets because this is the stocks 50 which is the heaviest weighted stocks let's look at ewu which is the uh the uk and you can see in here what I have done is I've put in the FEZ. This is the dashed green line in here. And we have this what we call a base cycle that formed. So you can see the cyclical action right in here. This dashed line is called a VTL. You can learn about VTLs in our cycle analysis workshop. Uh, go to our uh, asklim.com and there's an informative video in there when you look at workshops. And then when it broke the VTL, it just collapsed after that. Now what you have going on is this cycle that forms beautifully 
and it uh, bottoms in this buy zone right over here. And you could see that the actual cycle rhythms in the UK market pretty much match the FEZ, and that, of course, makes sense. Uh, and this looks to me like, you know, you're headed up here into this January, February period, and this is a very, very strong chart when you look at that. So beautiful condition that you see in here. Momentum also turning up right over here. Um, one of the important things that we look at is the 34 week moving average and most cycles move up and down through it or when they're really far away from it, it acts like a magnet and gets you back up to it as you can see here. Uh, and now it's not very far from that 34 week moving average. It's got a lot of time and room that it could move on the upside. So EWU, uh, the UK, looking really strong. Now let's look at EWG. <clears throat> This is Germany. What do you see? Pretty much the same thing, but it's even stronger because this cycle right in here actually got above that level. It came down to the uh, what is really an upper support area here, and then you can see beginning to move up again. And yes, when it gets above uh, this key level, right over here, actually that should be right at that point right there, that is going to be a breakout uh, where you get above that mm, 30, 85 area, and that would uh, send you up towards those FIB extensions right up over there. And again, up until January and February, we look at Germany here. Let's take a look at one more EWP uh, as we're looking at Spain, and Spain has been dreadful. You can see uh, how bad that's been. Uh, and now you have that, again, a basing cycle right on here. You can see how it tracks the FEZ very closely and exploding to the upside on here. I didn't put any projections, uh, but you can see, based on what we're looking at, it is really, really looking strong. So all of that uh, comes to the comparison from the FEZ that you see right over here and European stocks looking tremendously strong. Now, also when I look at Italy and France, they're pretty much the same. No reason to show you redundantly how that is. But interestingly, Canada and Mexico have very similar phasing and those stocks those ETFs for those countries look also very strong. So I want to show you a little bit different chart right here that I think is going to be valuable to this discussion. And you can see as I switch over to a relative strength comparison. So I'm looking at FEZ again, and these are those cycles. And on the bottom here is the relative strength relative to the S&P 500. And we're looking at a weekly chart, and this goes all the way back here for um, over, over a year, certainly. And you have what is a one-year downtrend in relative strength. This has been the, the strong U.S. stock market that has continued to move up while you have not been able to get spectacular upside moves in the European markets. But something really looks like it's about to change. Because you're getting, you know, when, you, when you're early in this rise, like we are right over here, three weeks into that, and now you're getting up to this where it looks like it's breaking out just barely uh, above that downtrend in relative strength. This to me says that the U.S. market is going to underperform the rest of the world. At least these other, you know, the European stocks that we're looking at, uh, and maybe even Canada and Mexico, uh, based on what we see in here. So that makes sense because the, um, the energy markets and the metals markets are, are strengthening significantly. And if that's the case, then um, the, the natural resource countries like Mexico and, and Canada are going to do better. And that's what we see in here kind of setting up. So the case I'm making when I look at this is really that the the, the market is is telling us that uh, the the U.S. market is is not really the place to be uh, if you want to be in, investing. So you know we're talking about looking out over the next you know one to three months, uh, and I would say at least into mid January to early February that we see the uh, the likelihood of these markets rising and the U.S. market not doing as well uh, and maybe even faltering at the time that these equity markets are doing better. 
So, you know, it, it's, hard, it, it's hard to look for much of a decline in the U.S. markets when we see this. Um, and when I say faltering, I, I'm, I've been talking about range bound. That's what I think we're going to see in the U.S. is, is a, a, a more range bound action compared to what we're seeing in, in these other markets. Uh, and certainly we look at what is a very, very improved picture for, your, for Europe and uh, some of these other countries that we're looking at. So I wanted to show you that. I thought it was very valuable information, and you got a good idea about our cycle analysis. Again, please do go to AskLim.com to the workshop tab and watch the video there and read the explanations, and you'll get a good sense of what our workshop is like. And uh, there's a table of contents there that shows you the 20 videos that are included. It's like 15 hours of training that we give you in that workshop. So that is a look at the European markets, FEZ, and comparing that to the U.S. market. So now let's take a peek at gold. <clears throat> gold market, as I said, uh, has been in danger of a breakdown. It's been weak, but it's been holding. It's gotten close to that 1848 level that we were looking at, but then began to move up. We're going to move off of this FEZ chart and we're going to move into the gold market forward slash GC. <clears throat> so this is the cycle analysis on gold. Yes, a busy chart. And this also has colored phasing in there. So that's why it looks so busy is that it shows you the rising phases and the uh, corrective phases in green and yellow. So I just want to look right over here where we are. Now, we are in this rising phase that you can see. Now, when you get into a nested period, you get the declines. All of these are correcting on the downside. And then you get into this rising period, and that's when you're supposed to get very significant upside moves. If I go back over here, you can see where all of this nesting was going on right over here. And that began this big upside move. Uh, right at that point. You, that, that's just the way it works when you get uh, the synchronicity of these markets uh, beginning to move in one direction or the other. So we should be moving up pretty significantly based on this pattern where we are right now. Now, I already have a yellow zone in there, and that's because this low right in here has been testing these lows. And we did that a couple of times this week also, uh, as well as having done this the last several weeks. It's been avoiding breaking, and you can see the 34-week moving average coming up here, which often is also a support area. And uh, this is really key for the gold market. It's gotten closer. Momentum in the gold market, as you can see right over here, that's where the momentum turned negative. And while it's been trying to go up, it flattened out, but it's actually still just a tiny little bit negative. I'm not going to show you the daily charts because the daily charts are what we share in our future speak from now on. Uh, and we'll be taking this little bigger view, view one to three months uh, in market week. And uh, the daily charts are showing negative uh, momentum and some pretty weak trading action uh, when we look at there. Now, the silver market is better than this. It's not close to a breakdown. So we, we think that the, the weakness in, in gold might actually be giving a better opportunity to be buying some silver at some point. Uh, but this is a, a what we consider to be uh, a, a dangerous pattern. And it needs to hold here. Uh, w w in, in order to get this to be uh, anything that really looks like it can significantly be better, it needs to get above this level that I tried over here at about 1967. We talked about that level a lot. And it did try to get through there. Uh, but then uh, it has been starting to struggle. And there's resistance right over here at about 1894 and more resistance here at about 1920. That's what comes uh, from the daily chart. And if, if we can get above those levels, above that 1920, it would be kind of a warning that it's going to hold in here and not break down. Right now, you can see we're still in this upward projections right in here. But those will change. If you break down under here and you start to move lower under this support, uh, then these will begin to point down over here. And we're looking at the dollar bottoming pretty soon and beginning to move up. And if that's the case, then gold is going to have just a hard time. Uh, so we have the caution flag out in this yellow zone uh, that uh, the gold market could be doing poorly 
uh, fairly soon. It's rescued itself a couple times in here this week. Uh, and let's see if it can pull away from this zone on the upside and look better. I'd like to see that happen. I want to be bullish. And when you see Bitcoin up near threatening within $1,000 of its all-time high, you wonder, how could Bitcoin be so strong and at the same time the gold market languishing? Well, maybe that is the reason. Well, think about that. So that's a look at gold, which is giving warnings in here. The next thing we're going to look at here is we're going to look at something that you're all been waiting for. We'll look at the stock market. So this is, uh, again, cycle analysis on the stock market, and we're looking at a one to three month view. So I did a comparison. Uh, if you're only just now uh, tuning in on a clip that is only showing the stock market analysis, please be sure you go back and watch the, the main show uh, or the clip on the uh, analysis of the European markets. Because in there we make a comparison and it is suggestive of the fact that other markets around the world are in better shape than the U.S. And that's certainly about valuation because uh, the U.S. market has been brought up to a level of extreme overvaluation, historic, and uh, at the same time other markets have languished and now that looks like it's reversing and that will give the U.S. market some problems and really favor other markets. So go back and watch that clip if you haven't seen it. We're going to switch here and look at SPY right now. So here is the great megaphone that's formed in there as you could see and we've been trading up at the top of that megaphone. Let's just get a little closer look in here and you will see these cycle patterns that have formed in here. And now I've added something in here. And what I've added was the FEZ because I wanted to show you with the top 50 weighted European stocks how its rhythm in here lines up with the US market. So you could see this key low right over here. Pretty good, right? Now, the U.S. market had some shorter cycle patterns. When the decline came here in FEZ, you got this minor decline here in the U.S. market. Now, this big decline was in perfect alignment, as you can see, and then this decline right over here, which matches the S&P, it tried to rally, but then stalled. And I, I couldn't quite figure out what this fake out was right over here, but now I understand is it was led down by the FEZ, by the European markets, which then made their significant bottoms right over here. So now what's going on is that all the markets, all the equity markets are moving up together. Now, what we expect to happen is a pullback in here in the spiders, and that is sometime into December getting down into the support area, which is around, we'll call it 30, uh, uh, 348, 347, maybe down to about 342 or 3, right down over here in December. So that is this minor cycle right over there pullback. And you see the market is getting a little bit sloppier now. Even on good news about the vaccine, uh, it's, it's now having a hard time making any real upside progress uh, after having these big Monday surges on good news uh, out of Pfizer and Moderna uh, about those vaccines having a very, very high 90 and 94.5% uh, efficacy. Uh, just fantastic news and the market had this big upside gap two Mondays ago and now you could see it's been just chopping sideways. So that's happening while the European markets are rising strongly a couple, you know and this this is what we think is part of this big rotation uh, as uh, investors look towards value and value is not the US index. it is uh, uh, the European indexes and value is a lot of, as they see it, a lot of these beaten up groups that have gotten killed by the virus. So money is being swapped and uh, it's, uh, uh, the US indexes we think are gonna struggle. Now we have a very slight upgrade in here because remember uh, if you watch that uh, analysis on the European markets, we talked about them holding up into this period of mid uh, January to early February. That takes you out up over here. So we have upgraded this slightly based on that as this upward 
phase right in here comes in uh, late December uh, and into, we'll call it mid late January right here, before this sharp corrective area where these yellow zones are, uh, when the downside really takes a hold. And we talked about this being a big top that we believe is being built in here uh, in the US market to be followed by, well, I'll say it again, uh, in future markets, but a pretty negative period out there. So this is um, a, a a little better picture of what we think is a range bound market with still maybe some slightly higher highs out over here. When we're over here, we said it was a likely uh, three three and a half percent upside versus a twenty to thirty percent downside, and we haven't changed that much. I mean, just maybe up uh, the upside of the range uh, a little bit different, but this is what we think still is a big top that is being built in here. Uh, but n no reason to talk about anything too negative uh, when we're only looking for a decline down into this area over here. Uh, which is just a, a small percentage drop and then moving up again, you know, maybe three to five percent and then uh, coming up again. So we think we're in a period where uh, we're going to continue chopping and then get uh, a little bit of a slap going on and then move up to higher highs over here being led by the world market. So supported by uh, a very, very different market uh, or different markets or stocks. Uh, than it has been before. Again, we think that the NASDAQ will underperform and you'll continue to get overperformance by the Russell uh, and overperformance, uh, we think certainly by other world markets. Do go and watch that video that we just did uh, where we do that analysis and you're going to learn a ton about our cycle analysis. So this is that great megaphone forming and you can see that we are at the top of that uh, and likely to make only minimal upside ground uh, looking forward in these next uh, one to three months as we're projecting. That is the look at the S&P 500. If you want to get our um, short-term analysis, uh, we give you that on 24 different futures contracts in the Future Speak show on Wednesdays. Uh, it's our really most popular show. And we give you uh, a, we also, for our members, they get the, what we call Future Speak Minutes, uh, of which we send you the, the links with the, the uh, time indexes for you to just click on and go to the spot where you're interested, plus bullet points that explains everything we said in that video. So fantastic stuff, of course, coming out of AskSlim.com. Uh, we have uh, our uh, special um, holiday gifts uh, coming up. Uh, and uh, uh, go back and watch that also if you haven't seen that, uh, if you'd like to give the gift of Ask Slim. That is it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed everything in this show. Uh, I want you to be so extremely careful. It is so crazy out there. And I'm always wishing you great trading. I'm a crew.